now i will brush up a very fast with something which i have already spoken before uh, i have again read little bit in last couple of days uh, to tell about what is happening in this area i mean it's and i will pass it quickly so before i i mean is on pharmacogenomics i don't have, i don't no conflict of interest i don't have to disclose anything i have a question in slido i think karthik will activate it do you advise genetic testing for a person with alcohol or nicotine addiction before choosing the basically medication means a appropriate medication in specific condition now provided it is available and low cost so these are the so if regimen that is available and low cost then do you still go for that or not uh, yeah and we can go to your smartphone uh, do a do a voting here at the end we will see how much people are advising again i remember the uh, you have it has to be available low cost let's assume it's available and low cost i'll quickly go through the introduction part uh, little about the genetic polymorphism just to highlight then what are the target in addiction which are well proven it looks like things are going and to summarize i think this is the i mean i all completely agree this is a paradox of development current scenario and uh, multiple time we discuss this thing here uh, you get a lot of uh, randomized control study you think everything is working very good and fine but when you actually treat, uh, treat an individual you realize that the response varies so much same drug may be effective to one person same drug doesn't work other person no response some drug has serious adverse effects so we hardly know uh, the translation between the randomized control trial and a clinical practice is there the lot of changes uh, again have uh, this why one size does not fit you look ssri only 30.38% response asthma drug 40% diabetes 43% so cancer 75% so there is a huge amount of drugs which are ineffective although being recommended to use but then at the when you start looking at effects are not, not very great this is a very interesting article in 2017 uh, i think last month is published this article is by one of the pioneer in the addiction field henry kranzler uh, so he has written about the like precision medicine i think precision medicine is similar to personalized medicine or medicine related to pharmacogenomics what does oncology have the addiction medicine does not have interestingly uh, you look at the biomarker of neuropsychiatry second behind the oncology so if you look at all the diseases oncology obviously is a very good biomarker we all know the reason being your tissue your tumor tissue can come out you can study the tumor tissue and do a biomarker now unfortunately human brain you cannot take out human brain tissue and do the biomarker that is problem with our our this our problem in spite of that uh, the psychiatry neuropsychiatry illness is the second commonest biomarker but it has not reflected in the precision medicine how it affect oncology all of us agree that oncology has gone beyond certain level and you look how cancer tumor markers are the predicting the responses but then not happening with the so this article is very interesting article sometime to read is a debate actually now why you need to know all these things you know that biological variation drug response look at adhd meds medication for adhd at least one out of 10 preschool so if you give 10 school children only 1% response whereas cancer drugs 20% it represents 6 out of 10 and addiction all of us know naltrex and acamprosat the most uh, most written drugs works only one out of 8 to 10 people who give you give so definitely there is a need to revise and thinking about this plan and this question i asked myself am i aware of this condition look when i give a citalopram i uh, explained not visible clearly now if somebody who is a poor metabolizer with cytochrom 2 to 19 there is a primary metabolizer and if you increase the dose beyond 20 mg there is a risk of qt prolongation so if you don't know that person is poor metabolizers and give everybody same let's for ocd or some of the condition give 40 60 mg and you are risking the person's life having higher qt prolongation and person can collapse if you don't know. so this is where all things come and there are and this this things are written in the drug labels if you take out citalopram from drug level look at the pharmacokinetics and dynamics you will definitely get this enzyme what how metabolizes so this This is how the precision medicine or personal medicine they talk about is a medical model that proposes the customization of healthcare with medical decision practices products being tailored to individual patients. So basically, the outcome can be improved by giving the right drug at the right dose at the right time, and patient specific selection of medication dosage. So this is where the uh, you come to the pharmacogenomics. So right drug, looking at the right gene. So right gene is mediated through the uh, response to treatment. look at the definition of uh, pharmacogenetics pharmacogenetics 
is the study of genetic variations underlying individual differences in drug metabolism drug response and in conjunction with other biomarkers to identify disease traits and therapeutic responses and that helps in uh, personalized prescription now let's just look at difference between genetics and genomics i think it's self explanatory genetics is the study of the effect of variation of a single gene where genomics is a wide genome association is a big all genomes multiple genes full specifically the conditions look at their polygenic inheritance like us but at the end it's a if you look at the what is the definition of a simple definition of pharmacogenomics or genetics to determine the right drug right dosage right time for each and every patient that is very important which doesn't happen at this point of any practices at least we are doing any patient come you get one drug i mean if the condition satisfies so this is where we are, we are targeting now if you look at uh, briefly the dna sequence of all human beings you know across world 99.9% identical so we are actually identically all identical by dna sequence now only 0.1% difference does it make a difference 0.1 yes it makes difference 0.1% translates to 3 million separate spelling differences in genome of 3 billion bases that 0.1% difference can change everything that why a gentleman why a person responds something some way to an alteraxon or baclofen or citalopram and somebody responds well or not so well let's briefly I'll talk about little genetic polymorphism the reason being there is heterogeneous population or heterogeneous, heterogeneous uh, colleagues are here a genetic polymorphism is any mutant or variant gene that occurs with frequency of more than 1% of normal population i'm thinking so if you look at the poly polymorphism three types broadly snp single nuclear polymorphism insertion and deletion are these are the classifications and not go now what happens because of polymorphism now because of polymorphism at anywhere there are five or six outcomes the drug metabolism can change drug transport transport from the receptor from the the receptor point change sensitivity to receptor changes responder versus non responder adverse drug reaction changes and disease susceptibility changes so although there is very less polymorphism but then it itself can cause multiple factors i was just to highlight how oncogenomics that is cancer genomics is being so promising uh, as you know uh, you can you can like some of the drugs which can be uh, one of the drug a monoclonal antibody tast to jumab jumab which is breast cancer that interferes in hcr to a new receptor this is effective in patients cancer because those who are tested over expression of the receptor so if there is over expression go for this drug you like to respond similarly uh, these are the uh, Conditions like melanoma, leukemia, metastatic, routinely given molecular diagnosis and molecular markers so that you can plan it. So this is your oncogenomics is gone. Let's let's come to addiction. If you look at addiction, it's a goal of personalized approach to treatment plan. I mean, approach is a problem also. You look at the where is the addiction lies. There's multiple factors. Now, which component you target? You want to target craving, emotion or mood, executive control, drive. So what is that you want to target in addiction? Unlike in the tumor, you know this ever expression or certain things. That is a challenge. I'll come back to some of the studies which have been happened in this area. Let's come back to first one, naltraxone. I mean, this is last time they also spoke. I'll just summarize. So naltraxone is opioid antagonist. It works in opi 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 opioid mu receptor. If you don't want to read anything, just look this slide. Last line. Those who are carriers of a One of eight G is opioid mu receptor. Polymorphism have better clinical response to naltraxon. Again, I have simplified. Carriers of the G allele of A one one eight G OPRM polymorphism showed a better clinical response, including low response rate on naltraxon than with only A allele. So basically, this is G allele has a good response, A allele poor response. This has been this more or less been proven beyond doubt now. now the, the challenge is whether we have allele there itself or not that's a different issue but if there is allele then if you are giving naltraxone go for gl allele that's what i want to tell here now the population where the article been published can tell whether we have the allele or not first of all okay now the africa what happens look at africa africa they found very low allele frequency so they obviously we give us a lot of good work The allele is not there itself. Where the question of GL and allele comes at all, so SP40 allele is not very very low in Africa, African population. 
and this is a very i think is a very interesting study from the kolkata center this is a study where they have taken a very homogeneous caste and brahmin caste uh, people with alcohol and opiate dependence in kolkata because you remember they you will do a, do a molecular or genetic study the sample is to pretty homogeneous otherwise you go go with everything now what they found is interesting one they found is that greater prevalence of asp40 allele that we are talking about now and also they found the significant association between a1 and 8 g that i spoke just now both alcoholic and opiate addicts compared to normal population that means indirectly that if you are going to give naltrexone the chances that it will work better is much higher you look at the table i have on given that those who a g allele in g in contrast to a allele if you take the g allele then the odds ratio is 2.44 so expression of uh, risk is 2.44 and uh, you yeah so and i mean alcohol addicted it's uh, 2.67 so if somebody has uh, have a patients from specifically probably as in brahmin coming to bangalore she is go for naltrexone uh, they are likely to work uh, if you can good can get the testing definitely but then this is very interesting study at least one study for from india uh, which is very very uh, helpful for us to decide a treatment plan now look at what about other population in the world uh, how what is the polymorphism they have Uh, as i told african american has zero i mentioned that they don't have the poly, uh, allele itself whereas so if you get a person from africa don't give naltrexone not going to work so come to nalmefin i think nalmefin been used in west but we have not, not able to use in the country except some here and there but interestingly no association in the same polymorphism a1 and 8g nothing they found no association okay so in uh, the, so bottom line in alcohol i think that if you are going to give naltrexone make sure the person is g allele carrier of sp40 so coming to nicotine i think very interesting work have been nicotine now we all give nicotine res- replacement therapy nicotine is mainly metabolized at cytochrome 26 individuals uh, now you remember those who are cyto- cytochrome p2 a6 null variants are genetically slow metabolizers of nicotine I mean, that means they have less severe nicotine dependence and more likely to quit smoking because they metabolize slowly so they will not take again and again because it's still not metabolized so if you are, if you want to use nicotine prove yourself that you are ci cyp 2a6 null so you will you'll not getting to you know hook to it less severe and likely to quit faster <coughs> so something interesting thing has come recently which is kind of doable now cytochrome p26 that i have showed in the first slide it is very difficult to you know pick up that uh, receptor in the thing so what they found this this uh, cytochrome indirectly can measured by something known as nmr nicotine metabolite ratio so ratio between three hydroxy cotinine and cotinine so you can measure measure so they that telling it's a biomarker for nicotine clearance and it's reliable now if you look at the data like you have a choice between nicotine replacement bupropion and varenicline all of us know these are three drugs that are available in the market now if you have a slow metabolizer like low nicotine metabolite ratio go for nicotine patch fast metabolizer go for bupropion normal metabolizer go for varenicline so this is can be done this is doable and this is the ratio between three nicotine nicotine versus nicotine cotinine I and mean, this is very interesting study in lancet last year I mean, I mean, a little difficult to understand, but I can, I can tell you. So, first, first, uh, they didn't slow metabolizers, normal metabolizers. So, slow met- metabolizers are uh, on medication. The three medications they tried, you can see first one placebo, the tenth one, middle one is nicotine patch, and the d- darkest one is paracetamol. Look what is happening. Look, slow metabolizers. Slow metabolizers are the quit rate in the y-axis are doing very good in nicotine patch. predict when this statistically not significant so the significant between varenicline and nicotine patch is, doesn't matter much if you're slow metabolizer so if you're slow metabolizer you can pay less money for a treatment coming to the if you go to the uh, six month follow up study you find out that if you're slow metabolizers nicotine patch is continue to give benefit whereas if you're if a normal metabolizer varenicline is a choice so obviously In six months and one year follow up rate has come down you know follow up has come down and you can see the slow metabolizers on nicotine patch who are who were on nicotine patch continue to do well you can see the middle one slow metabolizers in the middle path first thing and 
second and third. So nicotine patch, they continue to do well in, if they are their slow metabolizers. So if you want to choice, so slow metabol metabolizers are nicotine patch, normal metabolizers go for baronacline. Now I have just uh, last few slides. So um, methadone and disulfiram, some studies come, remember methadone for opioid dependence, they are telling that people who are uh, cytochrome P2B6 allele are more likely to have a QTC interval a prolongation as you know methadone is a cardiotoxic drug and that is one risk and disulfiram they have tested for cocaine dependence and that they are telling that DBHC polymorphism may influence the effectiveness of disulfiram treatment. So, remember these two are very very you know early findings compared to first two I spoke about alcohol and nicotine. Okay, I, I, as I promised, I will finish in 15 minutes. So, take home message here is if you are giving, if you are choosing a drug from a, for a person with alcohol dependence and you have the facility to get OPRM1 polymorphism. So, people, you prescribe naltraxone for the people who are G carriers, OPRM1A118G, not A. So, it should be AG or GG. If you get AG or GG, go for naltraxone. A, don't give naltraxone, nothing will work out. Now, tobacco, nicotine, if you are able to get NMR, that is nicotine metabolite uh, ratio, slow metabolizer, nicotine patch is the best. Upropion for fast metabolizer and baron and for normal metab metabolizers. So, these are the two key messages. Uh, I think probably summary of the whole thing happened till now. I don't think much work has happened. Uh, I mean, work is happening, but we have still have long way to go. Last point. Now, the question I have asked, I don't know how many responses come. Are you ready to implement in your practice? Now, let's look at what physicians spoke. One study, uh, 74 of the 1,000 odd physicians surveyed said that they would likely to adopt genetically tailored smoking season treatment. So, they, they want to do it. Because they also realize that they are not able to, you know, not all are responding. But the challenge is, data is still not robust. There are a lot of variation in allele frequency, as I mentioned. And the most important ethical issues, privacy and counseling. Once you know the genetic things, you know, there are a lot of issues about privacy and counseling. So those issues have to be taken care of. Okay, I think I will stop here.